Um, but we have another question. So, uh, Gavin. I think it's me again, isn't it? Yes. Um, so we're moving on. What is the current view regarding COVID vaccines? Is the pandemic over? And so my one word answer to that again is, is no, the pandemic is not over. Um, as always, though, it's important to, to try to understand what we mean by that. I mean, a pandemic is essentially an epidemic, which is an outbreak of disease that affects the whole globe. So the pan bit, it's a global, um, a, 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 a global phenomenon. So the World Health Organization declared it a pandemic on the 11th of March, 2020. And that's, that status, as far as I understand, remains in place. But that said, uh, things have changed a lot since March, 2020. And it seems to me that the effects of the virus and the manifestation of the pandemic is very different depending on where you are. Um, and it certainly seems to me that places where there has been an extensive vaccination campaign are managing the outbreak much better than those who have not. Um, and for the most part in Europe, we've had a good vaccination uh, rollout. And that's certainly the case in the UK too. None of the vaccines that we've had have changed since, since we first started, uh, although, of course, the virus has changed. We're now up to Omicron, and the dominant strain of Omicron is BA2. Um, and of course, the original vaccines were designed against the original um, alpha or even pre-alpha version of the virus. Uh, but those vaccines do still provide significant protection against the current uh, strain of the virus. It's not inconceivable that a new strain will emerge that will evade the vaccine-induced immunity, but of course now we have a population that has a much higher level of immunity and many individuals who also have high levels of immunity, and speaking for myself, um, I had a very uh, slight brush with COVID in the last couple of weeks, had a slight positive test, the interaction you have with the virus on a day-to-day -day basis will actually, to some extent, keep immunity topped up uh, for most people. Um, so even if we do end up with a strain that would evade the vaccine immunity, it probably wouldn't prove to be quite as bad at this point uh, as the original um, COVID-2. But of course, it doesn't mean that we couldn't get another viral curveball uh, which would wreak the same degree of havoc. But of course, none of that is surprising, and it wasn't surprising three years ago. Pandemics like this do occur with some degree of regularity every hundred years, roughly. Um, as a student, it was commonplace for us to be told that, you know what, well, sooner or later, there is going to be a pandemic. The expectation back then, of course, was that it would be a flu pandemic, um, such as in 1918, which was a flu pandemic. And of course, the concern about the coronavirus has really kicked off in 2002, 2003, with the emergence of SARS, which is Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome um, 1. We might call it SARS-1 now, but it's not. It's just called SARS-CoV. Uh, and this, of course, uh, it was self-limiting, and because of the measures that were taken, it didn't turn into a, a full-blown pandemic, but it does certainly provoke interest and concern among scientists who recognise this kind of virus as having a potential threat. And since then, they put a lot of work in to trying to work out uh, how to develop vaccine and other strategies for combating the coronaviruses with some success and some failure along the way. But I suppose what I just wanted to finish up by saying is that if, if, the, if the SARS virus that had turned up in 2002 had had the same biological profile as the SARS virus that turned up in 2019, it would have been a very, very different picture. We were able very quickly to have vaccines that would work, um, including from the Oxford group. And that's only because they've been working on this, you know, probably out of the public eye for, for the best part of 10 to 15 years. Um, and if, the, if we'd had to sort of create a coronavirus vaccine from scratch, it would, it would have been a very, very different story, I think. So uh, we can perhaps thank Providence that it happened in the way it did.
Um, on, on the issue of, if you like, fetal cell lines, certainly from my own point of view, I, I'm a bit more equivocal about it. It's not entirely clear to me the nature of the role of the cell lines within the development or production of the vaccines. I certainly know it was involved in the Johnson & Johnson one. But the reality is that the hex cell line, the human embryonic kidney cell line, which is the one that's usually uh, of concern, um, is used very, very, very widely within biological labs. And I'd be, it wouldn't surprise me if you plucked out the name of almost any drug you can imagine that at some point somebody has employed, you know, transfected hex cells in order to uh, try to sort of establish some information about it. So it's very, very difficult, I think, to disentangle yourself from the hex cells. And of course, I think it remains important to say that the hex cell, if it has the providence that it probably does, was derived from an aborted fetus back in the 1970s, I think. Um, but the use of hex cells now does not involve the destruction of embryos. So it's, it's if you like, an immortal biological resource. It's not an embryo and the use of them does not bring about the death of embryos or fetuses in the present day. So uh, in many ways, avoiding them is perhaps, uh, it, it's really a statement of concern about the prov provenance of the, of the cell line rather than a concern about the actual cell line and, and what happens with its use per se. I think one of the things that occurs to me um, about this question uh, or, or kind of the two aspects of the question is the pandemic over and what's the current view, what's the current status regarding COVID vaccines. But one of the one of the things regarding vaccines um, and, and how it relates to the question of whether the pandemic is over or not um, is if 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 at least the pandemic is not over, um, um, it has at least changed. Uh, I mean, the, the 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 questions of level the level of risk as it stands now compared to how it was back in March 2020, and so on. Now, this feeds into the question of the the moral legitimacy of certain vaccines, and and the fact that certain vaccines, um, uh, uh, as the as the as the Catholic Church has uh, expressed it, as being. Um, legitimate to use under grave circumstances and so there's a certain question in my mind as to whether have we passed out of grave circumstances now is there now the moral obligation to present oneself for a vaccine if one's to, to present for a vaccine that it be a vaccine that hasn't been derived from um, uh, fetal cell lines that's 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 one of the, the first major issues that occurs to me and yet there still might be an issue about um, resources, about the number of vaccines people have, have got, especially if you want to also supply vaccines to third world countries. So it strikes me as still being in that state, the stage where, you know, you're saying this is what we've got. I think we still have to make it clear that we want to have vaccines that are not tainted by illicit material, that we should always be doing that. But I'm not sure whether we're quite at the stage where people will have that choice. There's also the fear that people still have over COVID. And then if you add to that the reluctance of some people to be vaccinated in the first place, which is you know, the, the, their own choice, but if you start reducing what vaccines people can have, then that might hype up again some of the anti-vaccines sort of stance that these vaccines were unsafe, dangerous and all the rest of it, rather than our understanding that they were from illicit origins. So it's, yeah. it's, we're still in a really so sort of difficult um, situation there. Right it, here. it is very, it is very difficult, isn't it? Because because on the one hand, I mean, what what criteria are we to use to say whether we're we're still in grave circumstances or not? Does that differ from country to country? Um, um, I, I, and then also the question of um, uh, uh, you know um, the, the the question of what vaccines you can present for. Um, is, 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 is very often not in the hands of the individual, it's in the hands of the people who are buying vaccines in or, or who, are, who um, are testing them and so on. Um, so there's a, there's a, there's a certain um, uh, 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 area of difficulty there on those two, two levels.